is as far as I have come. This is all I'm going to do for now. It sounds pretty hollow in here, but in a couple of weeks that will change. So once upon a time I had a white desk across this line right here. And that's where I did a lot of my boxing or things that I had to do with the orchids indoors. I have these two desk drawers now left, which I am going to use as an extended shelving for my angraecums when they come in because the roots have gone to a certain length that I don't think will accommodate well against a wall. But that's all speculation. I, it's a puzzle that has to come together at the end when they all come in. These two new shelves here, recent acquisitions, because I think that it will be better than trying to squash everything on a desk up here onto the top shelf with the upper lights. And this is up here where all the Phalaenopsis complex hybrids used to live on that shelf and then on this back shelf here, but based on their new structures, I'm very much in doubt that that's going to work. I'll probably fit four up here and not have them touching. And I have about 10 of the big guys. So yeah, I am happy about these two new shelves here. They give me options. I have the shop lights up here. And then I have a very primitive version of blurple lights that they're not state-of-the-art top of the line but they do their job seeing as during the winter if it's sunny all my orchids go outside and play in the sun and then I bring them back at around 5 p.m. and load them up again so the blurple lights and the shop lights are actually only there to extend another two hours. And if need be, on very, very dull days, there is no point in me taking them outside. Then I switch them on for the orchids for about six to eight hours, no more. But you can see that here now, at least. Again, I have good access to all angles. This is the shelf where the tall epidendrums usually live. The guanamalenses lives here, right by the window. And I have made myself a little contraption of a curtain outside that's not quite finished yet. Maybe one day I'll show you how I did that, but there's a white curtain, so I don't have to fuss with the indoor curtain because I don't want to keep having to wedge it between plants, watch for the leaves, etc., etc. So. Yeah, I made myself a little outdoor rig that holds a curtain, not very straight yet. It was a test, but I think I can work it. I'll straighten it out and it, I can draw the curtain from the outside and not worry. That's where my pliers are. Okay, <laughs> I was looking for them. <laughs> so this is it. And look at this, I have been cleaning this glass shelf and all the wind and everything. Look at the dust again, look at that. It's like never ending, just dust all the time. And that's why this area usually only gets cleaned profusely uh, twice a year. When they go out, I have all the space to go at it and clean them when they come back in. I have all the space to clean it before they come back in. And look who's here. Ta-da! That is Arengus mysticidii. Just opened her blooms. And they have been allocated, so that'll be in another video. We'll talk about her. I can't say that this was very, very interesting, <laughs> but it was fun to take pictures while I was working 
was, you know, making sure because it's on camera to do a really good job type thing. <laughs> yeah, this is what I do, but only do it twice a year. And during the winter and summer months, I do maintain the floor a little bit. And now I will maintain it a little bit more because I actually have free access. This thing with the desk through the middle of the room, although while practical at the time, it was very awkward to keep the floor clean. Very awkward. A lot of kneeling and crawling and it was just getting too painful. So everything above waist level is awesome. So I think this space is ready to go. Should the weather throw me a curveball, then uh, they can come in. They can come in. So yeah, let's go back to Mr. City Eye. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Take care and stay safe. Bye.